heard you. <laughs> hey, good morning. Good morning. Awesome. All right, well, it's, uh, welcome to First Baptist. It's great to see you all here on a very warm Sunday morning. And so uh, if you're a first-time visitor with us, I invite you to look in the pews in front of you. We have these VIP Connect cards. Uh, and on the back of it, you can scan the QR code, do it that way, or simply fill it out, drop an offering box, and that way we'll have a record of your attendance. We appreciate that. A couple of uh, little ministry notes going on. Uh, first of all, today is a regular Sunday. It, the summertime just feels like there's always something going on, like last week was Father's Day. It's, it's just there's so much going on where it's like this has been shifted or changed or whatever. But today... It's a regular Sunday, which is great. So um, this afternoon, we have our regular small group schedule. Adults will be here in the sanctuary. Uh, youth will be in our small groups. There will be a WANA summer camp also going on for our kids. So today is a regular Sunday afternoon, which is great. This Wednesday is also going to be a regular Wednesday, except um, fellowship meals. So if you eat before you come, <laughs> that's the way it works. Uh, but it's a regular Wednesday night thing going on as well. Uh, our, our legacy builders have a fun thing coming up this Where's Miss Jan? There she is. It's Saturday, right? It's just coming up Saturday. And tomorrow's the last day to sign up. Is there a time like you got to have it by this time? Because you know they're going to. Two. Oh, I thought you said two. Noon. Noon. Not two. Noon. Just kidding. Noon. Hey, if you've not signed up already to go with the Lexi Builders to Cedar Lane this Saturday, tomorrow is the cutoff. Uh, so, um, let Ms. Jan know ASAP or call the church office first thing in the morning at 9 a.m. and get signed up. Leaving at 4. Okay, that's a good piece of information to know. Uh, they're pulling out on Saturday at 4. Leaving at 4 on Saturday. And if y'all never had um, Cedar Lane, like you might want to ask Ms. Jan what the cutoff limited age is on, on being a legacy butter because it's good. That's really, really good food. And so, uh, anyways, that's coming up this weekend uh, also. FCA event, PK's mentioned it several times from the pulpit, um, is coming up July 16th, which will be here before we know it because the summer's already halfway gone. So, um, I'm, there's already been some feeders asking people to help with certain areas of ministries and all. And so, that will be coming at us fast. There will be a lot more details as we get in a few weeks out but be praying for it be praying for the speaker the band all the different uh be praying for the students to be coming in because it's gonna be a lot of football players and we know not all of them are going to have been exposed to jesus or have heard the uh, who he is so be praying for that event anyways that's uh, kind of what's the immediate things coming up now so uh, we're going to open up a word of prayer and then after that we'll start with a uh, with worship through song so pray with me father we do we thank you for loving us uh, we thank you for the freedom to gather today here um, at 101 South 2nd Street. And Lord, we do, we just pray for, for churches who don't have the freedom we have right now. Lord, help us not to take that for granted. And we do as we um, just gather, we just pray that you'll help us to focus on what you're going to say to us through, through song, through your word, through all these different means. And Lord, we do, we just pray that you'll help us to focus on that, that focus on your spirit as he, he teaches and as he guides us and shows us the things we need to see and the things we need to hear, Lord. We ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen.
Okay, so uh, right now we're going to do something. We're going to celebrate a little bit. Can we do that? I love to celebrate stuff. We have a couple of guests with us today, uh, Wanda Tripp, Marilyn Sanders, and they are with Samaritan's Purse Operation Christmas Child, and we got to uh, work side by side with them. Y'all come on up. It's yours. Good morning. morning. Y'all have a big crowd. That's great to see that. Uh, this day and time, it's rare, and I'm so thankful to God that y'all have got such a big family here. Um, I wanted to thank y'all. That's the main reason why I'm here, is to thank y'all for y'all's participation with Operation Christmas Child, the shoebox ministry. Um, and I brought a few of these little packets of seeds that... Uh, if y'all want to get one before you leave for your family. Um, and I put on there the Bible verse, he which soweth sparingly shall also reap sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. That's 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 15. It's just a little token, but I wanted you to, to remember when you think about planting, y'all's church has been such a powerful impact of planting seeds and sharing God's word. Just to give you a little example of it, since 1993, more than 220 million children in 170 countries and territories have received a shoebox gift. Y'all were part of that. A network of more than 18,000 year-round volunteers Almost 11,000 in the United States and over 7,000 worldwide serve year-round. But just to be a drop-off leader, which is what First Baptist Church here is, y'all are a drop-off location. Mr. Jeff Dykes is a drop-off leader here. And people from all around can bring their shoeboxes here, and then we send them to the central drop-off in Eastman. Um, over 187,000 short-term volunteers serve at our drop-off locations and processing centers, and that's powerful, powerful. Our goal this year is to uh, send 12 million shoebox gifts. We want y'all to be a part of that. But just to give you a little background of what Samaritan's Purse is, Marilyn, this is Marilyn Sanders. She and I both work with Samaritan's Purse with Operation Christmas Child, the shoebox ministry, but also with Disaster Relief. Um, Samaritan's Purse is based in Boone, North Carolina. And we, through Samaritan's Purse, provide emergency relief to millions of Ukrainians who live in the war-torn area of Ukraine. Not only do are we sending shoeboxes into that area, but we're also uh, providing disaster relief, but giving God in a tangible way to people who feel left out and feel like nobody loves them. It is such a wonderful thing to get a shoebox, to get a gift, most children who receive a shoebox have never got a gift at all in their life. And when you think about that, think about how many times we just go to Walmart and pick up a toy or something for a kid, uh, how many birthdays, how many Christmas presents and all that. But in most of the areas where these shoeboxes go, these kids have never got a gift at all in their life. So they open it up, they see a wow toy, they see other toys, school supplies, maybe clothes, hygiene items. But more important than that is they feel love and they feel God's presence and they learn that somebody loves them and they learn about God in their language. We have it printed, Samaritan's Purse does, in the language of whatever child that is receiving it, which is very powerful. Um, I wanted to tell you that we also go on from the shoebox and have the greatest journey where a child can uh, participate in it. It's a 12-week study. They can graduate from it. But more important than that, 
over 20 million participants in that program have made a decision for Christ. That's powerful. That's very powerful. Um, yeah. If you think that, that what you're given is just a gift, just a toy, just something for a child, uh, in the areas where these shoeboxes are going, most of the time we're not able to get God's word into those areas. If we get it approved and get the shoeboxes able to go into that area, then they get the word of God. They get a little booklet called The Greatest Gift that tells them about Jesus. So it is a way for us to get God's word into these areas, into islands, uh, areas where God's word has not been reached. And you know in his word it says his, that his word will not return void. And he will get his word into every nation. And this ministry is a part of it. And last year, 18,030 shoeboxes came through Blackley County. That, that each shoebox has the potential of reaching 10 people because they bring that shoebox home, they share it with their family, they share it with their friends. They say, look what I got. But I know that somebody loves me. That's 1,830 times 10. Do the, do the figure it. I mean, but a lot of that, the children then turn around and become pastors or begin to spread the word telling other people about Jesus Christ. So I want to thank you. There were, every year at the shoebox drop-off locations, we have people to come and volunteer and help. And this church alone stepped up with about 80 volunteers. How powerful that is. I never have seen that before. Maryland's been working in this ministry longer than I have, and we never see volunteers turn out like that. So thank you very much. Thank you. If you helped in any shape, form, or fashion, if you pack a shoebox in any way, if you helped to uh, participate with the finances, whatever you've done, thank you. I love you each, and I thank you so much for it. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to Marilyn. She has probably a couple of words to say. <laughs> Just real quick. Uh, I'm the central uh, drop-off team leader for Dodge County. Uh, well, actually, for 10 counties that now drop their boxes where they collect in Cochrane and Hawkinsville. They all come into Eastman, and we fill up a big truck and, well, four trucks, and then they go up to Atlanta to the processing center. There's volunteer opportunities uh, at during collection week, as well as what you're doing here at your church also at our collection center, and then when we go to Atlanta, you can go to Atlanta with us too. We get the church bus and we go for uh, work for four hours and then we come back. But what I wanted to tell you about is we have uh, the shoebox house in Eastman, uh, about a block away from First Baptist Church. We've had it there for this is our 12th year. But what we do is we buy filler items in bulk. I mean, buy the pallet. I will buy a pallet of soccer balls or a pallet of soap dishes, toothbrushes, you name it. But by buying in those large quantities, we can get better prices. And that's the whole object, is, is that we can make by packing shoe boxes more affordable. So starting the 2nd of July, through every Tuesday, through uh, the end of October, the 29th of October, we have volunteers that meet at the shoe box house, four to six o'clock in the afternoon. Everybody's welcome. There's little jobs, you're counting out toothbrushes, you're, you're wrapping whistles in little bags and doing things that'll help us get people ready. So if you come in and you need 50 items of something, we've got them ready for you. I'm gonna leave here this little folder. Inside of it is a description sheet. This is the order form. This is a description sheet of the different items that are available at the shoebox house. And it's not too early to start, start shopping for your shoebox items. Uh, school supplies, back to school is going on sale now. You know, you need to think about this after Christmas, after Valentine's, after Easter's, when you can buy some of this stuff for your shoebox and you get a better price for it. But I just want to let you know about the shoebox house and the volunteer opportunities. Uh, my name and number and contact information is on the bottom of the form. If you give me your email, I can email this to you. And then if you decide you want something for your shoeboxes, you send it back to me. We get started. We let you know when it's ready for pickup. So. We'd love to have you guys join us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. 
This is Philippians 2, 5, uh, 6 through 11. So, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. He read that in one breath, didn't he? <laughs> That's great. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we're going to sing a little bit. Now, here's the thing uh, about uh, worship. It's kind of my, uh, some things I think about a lot, is that oftentimes worship is something that we participate in passively. But a lot of times not directly. We kind of, a lot of times we'll sit and just kind of watch, you know, whether it's a band or the choir or instrumentalist. And, 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 and we'll give our voice to some songs. But I think sometimes it's good for us to intentionally uh, connect in some ways, especially with some, you know, some of the great songs of our faith. So that's what we're going to do, hopefully. So we're dividing you up, dividing you up into two choirs right now. Okay? This is the lower choir. This is the upper choir. The designations have nothing to do with ability. It's just that y'all are sitting on the floor, and they're sitting up in the warmer balcony. Okay? So we're fixing to sing a song. Ty just read to us this beautiful scripture about God has given Jesus a name that is above every name. We're going to think about names for a little bit, the name of Jesus. And so we're going to sing a song together uh, in the name of the Lord. Okay? So there is strength in the name of the Lord. Who's ever heard this song? There is power in the name of the Lord, and there is hope in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Right out of Matthew 23. Okay, so this is how we're going to do it. Uh, choir, stand up with me real quick. This is just to make sure you, you, you got it. I just want you to listen. We're going to sing through it one time. Okay, just give me a chord. Okay, ready? There is strength. You're going to have to stand up in just a minute with the choir. Okay, on the first, we, we are going to speak to each other through this song. Okay? So on the very first phrase, there is strength in the name of the Lord. and It will be up on the screen. That's the lower choir. Y'all are the upper choir. Y'all be quiet. Choir, choir, y'all be quiet. Lower choir, you're going to start us in this call to worship, or I mean in this exclamation of why we worship. There is strength in the name of the Lord. Okay, you got that? So we're going to practice real quick. You ready? Just give me a chord. Choir, lower choir, look at me. We will practice this for the next hour if y'all don't come through. <laughs> and I'll still preach after that hour. I'm just saying. Okay, there's our chord. One more time. Here we go. There. Could do better, or was that good? Do better. better. Okay, give us a chord. Okay, now. They're going to sing that upper choir. That's what you're going to do. You're going to answer them with what? There is power in the name of the Lord. So, lower choir, be quiet for a second. Choir, choir, be quiet. Upper choir, this is y'all. There is power in the name of the Lord. Okay, chord, there it is. Look to the person next to you, make sure they're awake. <laughs> you can elbow them if you need to. 
Upper choir, would you please stand? <laughs> We're going to go through this one more time. That's, that's your whole part. There's power in the name of the Lord, okay? Okay, there's our core. Here we go. Could y'all hear him down here? Yeah, okay, give him a hand. That's good. Give him a hand. Okay, choir, choir. Y'all are going to sing the third phrase. You're going to respond to this big choir right here. So you're going to be singing, There's Hope in the Name of the Lord. And then all of us together are going to sing what? This is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Going to go through it twice. You're first. You're second. Not in standing or importance in terms of who sings when. First, second, third, all together. So we all get to hear No. <laughs> you will in just a second, but I promise you, you will hear them on their part. Okay, so everybody's got to stand up now. We're worshiping together. We're exclaiming, we're exclaiming in song what we believe based on scripture. Okay? So let's get an introduction. Lower choir, be ready. Here we go. service <laughs> and uh, no really it's, uh, everybody sounded great so now we're going to sing remain standing um, again we're, we're singing about thinking about the name of Jesus and this is right out of our hymn book hymn 312 Jesus your names be up here on the screen His name is Wonderful Counselor, who guides us through the hills and valleys of life. His name is Mighty God, who harnesses his infinite power to give strength to the finite. His name is Everlasting Father, our faithful and forever 
protector and provider. His name is Prince of Peace, who calms the storm in our soul and leads us to still waters. His name is Man of Sorrows, who carries our shame and our pain and our guilt and our past. He's the Lamb of God, who lives and bleeds and dies in our place. He's the Lion of Judah, who fights for us the battles we could not fight on our own. He is the power of God, the wisdom of God, the glory of God, and the gift of God. And he is the Son of God. He's the Ancient of Days, who has no beginning and who has no end. He's the radiance of God's glory, the culmination of the perfection of God. He is the commander of God's army, with multitudes of angels bowing in reverence at the mention of his holy name. He's the living stone and the rock of ages. He's the root of Jesse and the son of David. He's the light of the world and the Lord of all. He's the king of kings and the image of the invisible God. There's no one like him. He is undefeatable. He is non-repeatable. He is incomparable and he is inescapable and he is the great I am and he is worthy, worthy of our devotion, worthy of our worship and worthy of his name, the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The name above all names. I tell you, we're going to be thinking about the name of Jesus today. <laughs> Singing about it. We're going to go into one of our older hymns now. All hail the power of Jesus', Jesus name. Let's all stand together as we sing, please. say a word real quick. Um, <clears throat> this um, anthem that our choir is fixing this year, it's got a great message to it. It's got some energy to it as well. Uh, I don't know if she's watching or not, but you might notice that our organist is not here today, uh, Miss Sonja, and uh, she's unable to be here, uh, not feeling well. 
And Sanjay, if you're watching, we miss you. This actually uh, was intended to be, or, or we had worked on it and is intended to be, a forehand piano accompaniment. The both of them are going to be sitting over here playing, accompanying the choir. And two of those four hands couldn't be here this morning. And so Jimmy's going to come up. <laughs> that, that was your cue. You're sitting on the far side of her. Okay, that's where you got. And so, you know, you just make adjustments. And, um, but I just wanted to give a shout out to Sanju. We miss you being here. And Glenda, falls on you. Thank you. She's going to have hands and feet working at it, but it's going to be going. <laughs> These are uh, just some of the new requirements we're having for our active deacons now that to be able to fill in uh, even on our instruments when, when necessary. Thanks to our choir and thank you to our larger choir out here. By the way, I received some advice when I sat down right here, helping me to maybe understand the upper choir a little bit better. 
And this person said, you know, when you think about the physics of sound and sound waves, she said, a lot of their voices and sound were trapped up underneath that roof up there. And so I'm like, okay, next time we do this, I'm going to invite all of y'all to come stand right down here. It would be great. I want you to think about all, and, and, and I mean, that we could go on and on, but I want you to think about the, the large number of people that you know from just one name. Just one name, and you know exactly who you're talking about. You probably know a lot of stuff about that person. I'm going to throw something out. Uh, in the world of basketball, if I threw out the name Jordan, how many of you know who I'm talking about? How many of you think it was Jordan Poole? <laughs> how about Michael Jordan, yeah? And all that goes with that. If I threw the name out Kobe, would you know who I'm talking about? The name LeBron. If I threw out the word Tiger, what sport am I talking about? Oh. Yeah, there you go. What about Messi? If I just threw out the name Messi, what are we talking about? What did y'all say? Football. football? Who said football? I did. There you go. There you go. Very good. There you go. I like that. Um, and then for a little bit old school, a little bit older school. If I throw out the name Kareem, who am I talking about? Kareem Abdul-Jabbar played for the Lakers and, and one other team. He was a legend in his day. But you know, it's not just, it's not just athletes that have these one-name recognition and, and some really bad people. If I throw out the name Stalin. Yeah, Hitler. I mean, it's just you know, it's just it's just one name there. We, we know this stuff, or the names of some that are not as familiar to us, but we recognize them: Plato, Aristotle, Gandhi. In the world of music, Rihanna. Who's ever heard of her? Who knows who I'm talking about? Madonna. Who knows who I'm talking about? Beyonce. Who knows who I'm talking about? Elvis, who knows who I'm talking about? Yeah, you're welcome. Drake, who knows who I'm talking about? Sting, who knows who I'm talking about? Yeah. I mean, that, we could go on and on. We could. But I, I want to ask you an honest question, and you're going to think, that's a silly question, but no, I really want you to think about it. Of all these that I named, and, and the many more that we could name if we want to stay here till 3 or 4 o'clock this afternoon, which I don't because I'm kind of hungry right now. What would you expect if you called out to any one of these that I just named, what, what, what would you expect in return? What kind of response would you expect if you called out to Kareem or to LeBron or to Plato or to Gandhi for help or for rescue? Or if you called out to that name for strength or for power or for hope or for forgiveness or provision or wisdom or protection, what would be your expectation of a response if you called on any of those names? Though, though you know who I'm referring to when I throw out these one names, and you may even know a little bit about them, the truth is you don't know them. And really, they don't know you either. Even if you picked up the phone, hey, hey, this is me from Cochran, Georgia. Look, Michael Jordan, you made a lot of money when you were playing basketball. We're looking at building a new building. Would you like to donate a million dollars to help us get that up? Okay, you think Michael Jordan's going to take that call from you from Cochran, Georgia? No, chances are not. There is no expectation. And yet in the Bible, Ty read to us earlier in verse 9 of Philippians 2, that God has ex highly exalted him, meaning Jesus, and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. He is the eternal one name wonder right here. Jesus. In Matthew, when God is speaking to Joseph in a dream, he says, you shall call his name. Who can quote it? Yeah, call his name Jesus. In Luke, in speaking to Mary about what she was encountering, fixing to go through, she was told, and you shall call his name Jesus. Jesus, the name above every name. Bill and Gloria Gaither, several, several years back, I have no idea how many, but they, they sang, and I think they also wrote a song called, There's Just Something About That Name. And it just starts out, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. 
By the way, that same song was covered by Torrin Wells, who's a more contemporary artist today. You ought, you ought to look it up sometimes. It's really good. There's just something about that name. And there's a lot of other names we know Jesus by. And a lot of these are descriptive of all the things that are tied up in the name of Jesus. He is called Redeemer, kind of like our video showed us. Alpha Omega, Christ, our advocate, our good shepherd, our counselor, our prince of peace, light of the world, bread of life. So many things. But the one name, the one name which encircles and encompasses and, and fills up all of these is the name Jesus. Jesus. So... I want to encourage you about the name Jesus. Um, but before I do that, I want to step back just a little bit. When we, as followers of Christ, when we speak the name of Jesus, and that's a great song, by the way, I speak the name of Jesus. Who knows that song? Right? That's a great song, too. When we speak the name of Jesus, we, we really always need to speak that name with great reverence and awe and joy and expectation. I think a lot of times when we speak the name of Jesus, we like to we need to be like that six or seven year old who whose grandmama and granddaddy showed up by surprise and they just go running up. Gramsy, granny, hey. We need to approach Jesus with this incredible childlike joy and trust and love and peace and security. But you know, the name of Jesus is used in some not really nice ways in our culture a lot of times. It really is. And I just want to caution you against it. I don't know if any of you do. But you know, when, when I'm around somebody and, and something bad happens, it makes them angry or, or whatever it is, and, and they say, Jesus Christ. I, I want to say, wait, 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 hey, 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 I know that dude. Don't, don't, don't use his name like that. And I said, well, I'm not taking God's name in vain. I said, oh, contraire, I think you are. The name of Jesus is not a, it's not a swear word. It's not an exclamation of anger. It is, it is us calling on our, our Holy One, the one who died on the cross for us. The name of Jesus. So what is in the name of Jesus? I mean, what, what, what's there? What, again, being a preacher, I have to narrow it down to three things I just want to focus on. And a point, and then a prayer, and then we're done. I want you to know that there truly is strength in the name of Jesus. We sang that. Now you're understanding why we sang that a little bit, aren't you? There is strength in the name of the Lord. There's strength in the name of Jesus. In Philippians 4.13, very familiar verse to all of us. And it's one that we quote sometimes, and I think it's kind of like with uh, the way we sing Amazing Grace sometimes. We just know it so well, we don't always uh, put on the brakes and just really think about what the Bible is saying, Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ, through him who strengthens me. There is strength in the name of Jesus. Now, I want to read that very same verse to you. Uh, what's on the screen right there is from the English Standard Version translation of Scripture. I want to read the literal word-for-word uh, -word translation from the Greek New Testament before it's kind of reshaped to fit our... Our, our ears in terms of how we listen. But in, in, if you go home and get your Greek Bible, you pull it up and you, 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 you transliterate it literally and just read it as it's written. It, it reads like this, and I love it. I am strong for all things through him who strengthens me. I am strong for all things through him. I am strong comes from the word is kuo, which means I have received strength. I received strength. I received and will continue to receive strength through him in, in the Christ who empowers me. And empowers me is a whole different word. And it comes from uh, indemanunte, which is a Greek word, which means to give or to confer strength. So... You know, I know a lot of times athletes like to use this verse and whatnot. And, and, and so often when we use this verse, we're using it in the context of, you know what, I'm fixing to do this. And by golly, it's going to be successful because I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. That's not really what that verse is about. That verse is about, look, regardless of what you end up facing in your journey, okay, if you'll call on the name of Jesus, whatever it is, he will fortify you. That's another great meaning of that word. He will strengthen you for whatever it is. That's why I love that, that reading. I am strong for all things, whatever it is, in the Christ who 
empowers me. Great Bible story. We're not going to tell it in detail. But the part I love about this particular Bible story is this a picture of the strength that God gives to us and that we see in the life of Christ and is made available now to us in relationship with God through Jesus Christ. It's the Old Testament story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. How many remember that story? Yeah? And they weren't bowing down. They weren't going to bow down to the image of the king. Remember that? And the penalty for not bowing down was what? Yeah, a fiery furnace. Man, we've sung children's songs, and we've done flannel graphs, and we've retold that so many times. But the part of the conversation, okay, where just before they're going to be thrown in that fiery furnace, the king gives them one more chance to recant. He said, come on, guys, you don't, you don't want this. It's going to be bad news. Just, just, just do it, you know. And the leader of these three looks at him. This is the strength of the Lord. There is strength in the name of the Lord. This is what comes. He looks at the king. The fire furnace is waiting for him. He says, king, look. My God, he can save us from this. But even if he chooses not to save us from this, I still worship him. I will not bow to you. It takes strength, a strength that comes from on high to look into the face of that kind of persecution, compromise, whatever you want to call it, and to say, no, you do, you do your worst. I'm going to trust God with my life. Doesn't matter. Where's that strength come from? That strength is in the name of the Lord. That's where you find that, whatever it is you're dealing with in life. You call on the name of Jesus. Jesus, I am so weak. I don't, I don't know. What am I going to do? Call on the name of the Lord. Not only is there strength in the name of the Lord, but there's also power in the name of Jesus. Power. Okay, in Luke chapter 8, if you want to turn there real quick, or, uh, read just a few verses. I love this story. It's another very, very well-known story. A lady who had had a discharge of blood for 12 years. It's often called the miracle on the way to a miracle. And uh, we're going to pick it up in verse 43. We're not going to read all the background. And primarily there's one thing that Jesus says I want you to hear. Okay, Luke 8, 43, and there was a woman who had had a discharge of blood for 12 years, and though she had spent all her living on physicians, she could not be healed by anyone. She came up behind him, that being Jesus, and touched the fringe of his garment, and immediately her discharge of blood ceased. And Jesus said, all right, who touched me? And everybody denied it. Peter said, Master, the crowd surrounds you. But Jesus said, Someone touched me, for I perceive that power has gone out from me. That's who Jesus is. He is power. Power translated here in this particular passage from that Greek word you've heard me talk about for dunamis. Explosive power. It's a little bit of the root of our English word dynamite in that word dunamis, okay? And Jesus says this supernatural, otherworldly power, I felt it go out of me, who touched me in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Lord, there is power in the name of the Lord to change lives, to heal relationships, to bring physical healing, to change the direction of a country. To bring a wandering child home. To bring restoration between men and women who have been so angry or so hurt for so many years. There's power in the name of the Lord. Man, we have to call on the name of Jesus. Jesus. I was reading the story. I wasn't reading the story. I'm sorry. Uh, I was watching the interview uh, this past week. Uh, Michael Knowles. I don't know how many of you know that name. Um, he's a great... Um, spokesman uh, for um, for biblical values in, in our culture. In this particular interview, he was interviewing two people, Nick and Lex. You got that? Now, I'm just going to read a little bit of the transcript. I don't have time to go into all the details, but I just want you to hear, and I want you to see and hear in this story the power of, that is in the name of the Lord. Nick, who used to identify as gay, and Lex, a woman who used to identify as a man, 
said they met and got married when they were both living out their LGBT lifestyles. After coming to faith in Christ Jesus, Lex detransitioned and the couple stayed married as a heterosexual couple. The young couple described how God renewed their minds and Lex's physical body that she had been uh, really pumping a lot of these uh, transitioning drugs into. Lex said that early in their relationship, she had to get biopsies which found cancerous cells inside of her. After detransitioning, Lex said that a doctor from Planned Parenthood was shocked and told them, this doesn't make physical possible sense, but you no longer have any cancerous cells in your body. Now, if you want to search this out, this is a great interview. And so here's this couple now. And I mean, they are living for the Lord. They're speaking for the Lord. You heard what they came out of. And, um, and I'm like, that is an example of the power of the Lord. To reshape the human heart. To not just reshape it, but to take the old and make it new. The Apostle Paul said, look, look, in Christ, the old has passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That's the power that's in the name of the Lord. That's why when we come to Jesus, we come to him for salvation and we cry out to Jesus. And we say, Jesus, I am messed up. I am broken. I'm a sinner, but I believe that you are who you say you are. And you died on the cross for me and you were resurrected. Jesus, would you come into my heart? There's power in the name of Jesus. There's strength in the name of Jesus. And then the last thing I want to say, and we're going to go. We're going to sing a song and go. Is that there is hope in the name of Jesus. You hear the whole song now? There is strength in the name of the Lord. There is power in the name of the Lord. There is hope in the name of the Lord. See, we were singing scripture, whether you realize that or not. In Lamentations chapter 3, if you want to turn over there with me in the Old Testament, Lamentations chapter 3. Uh, as you're turning there, that's probably one of those books that your Bible automatically falls open to. How many of you go straight to Lamentations for your quiet time? Just raise your hand up. Yeah, that's what I thought. Well, that's a popular. It really is. There's some great deep truth in this book. And we're not going to read uh, all the way from verse 1, but the writer in those first 18 or 17 verses just talked about, man, he is suffering, things aren't working out, people are against him, he's just physically, emotionally, relationally, just, it's, it seems to be crumbling around him. And he comes to verse 18 of Lamentations 3. Follow along with me as I read. So I say, my endurance has perished. Listen to this, so has my hope from the Lord. That's where he is. He feels like all hope has been lost. Remember my affliction and my wanderings, the wormwood and the gall. My soul continually remembers it and is bowed down with me. But, but this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. You, you see what he just said? I've about lost my hope, but then I remember, and now I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. G.K. Chesterton, in talking about hope, he writes this. He says, hope means hoping when things are hopeless. Or it is no virtue at all. As long as matters are really hopeful, hope is mere flattery or platitude. It is only when everything is hopeless that hope begins to be a strength. The hope that we find in Jesus when we call on his name is a deeper hope than what we can ever find anywhere else. It is an everlasting hope. It is a hope that is based on God's goodness, God's character, God's faithfulness. We absolutely hope in the Lord and all that he teaches us in Scripture. I'm with, my wife's right here. And you've heard me talk about this a couple times. A few years ago, and I got really bad sick. And the first night or two when I was in the hospital in Macon, it, it was real dicey. And um, we had Debbie Downer for a doctor. Um, that first night or first or second night, I was up there in ICU. And, of course, I, I'm, all this is secondhand because I was sleeping. So I didn't get to experience any of this. But the doctor came out to talk to my wife and basically said, ma'am, I need you to understand that your, your husband's mortality is very low. 
ha ha, very high, very high. Means I was going to die that night. And went on to say there, there's every good chance that he will not make it through this night. And um, so, you know, my wife just kind of stood there looking at him. And so he repeated it and maybe he tried to simplify it, hoping that maybe or thinking maybe she didn't understand what he was saying. And when he finished the second time around, my wife, in the fullness of the strength and the power and the hope that we find in the name of Jesus, looked at that doctor and said, yeah, but he's not dead yet. Okay, in saying that, she was not saying, I'm absolutely convinced that this is going to happen or that's going to happen. What she was saying is, whatever happens, I put my hope in God. And what I know at this minute right now, he's not dead. So would you please get to work? Her hope in the Lord would not be any different today had I stepped into eternity. Her hope was not in me surviving. Her hope was in the Lord. And he did something. 93 days later, I came home. Nice little vacation. Just hanging out up in Athens and making it. was great. I know I'm getting older. And I find the older I get, the simpler I get in my praying. And I cannot tell you the number of times my prayer is nothing more than just calling the name Jesus. Jesus. And it breaks me up. Because in that name is everything my heart ever needs. We're going to sing a song as we close our service, and it's a song using one of the other descriptive names in Scripture of our Savior. A guy named Keith Green, you've heard me talk about him saying it. But the hymn is there is, a Re- there is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son. And uh, we're going to kind of sing this as our, our closing hymn, but uh, before we stand to sing it, if you're here today and you've never called on the name of Jesus for salvation, if you've never embraced the name of Jesus by way of saying, Jesus, I believe you are who you say you are, and I have a problem. I know I'm broken. Would you come into my heart? This would be a great day. If you're in the balcony, just come right there and go out that door, go down those steps. You turn, come in those doors, you'll be here. If you go out that door, you'll get lost. Or maybe you need to call on the name of Jesus for something that's going on in your life. Because you desperately need strength to see his power, to experience his hope. This altar is open. If you want to come here and pray, you can just step right out. Or you can turn around and kneel right there in that pew. If you need to respond publicly in the name of Jesus, this would be the time to do that. Let's stand together as we sing. There
beautiful. This has to do with our hope. And you know what? If there's somebody around you that you want to pray for, just reach over and take their hand and say, can I pray for you? If the Spirit puts it in your heart. But let's sing together this last verse. When I got to take care of some stuff. This is Ben Mullis. How many of y'all know Ben? Ben, do you stand right here and turn around? Face everybody. Wave. <laughs> okay, standing next to Ben is Katie. How many of you know Katie? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, it was brought to my attention. Uh, it kind of surprised me a little bit. It surprised her a little bit. It surprised him a little bit. That Katie, though she intended to, has never moved her membership to this church. And she wants to do that today. And um, so, where's, what church is your membership at right now? Shirley Hills up in Warner Robin. And uh, so we'll be sending for that letter. I think she has shown her faithfulness. She would be here more often if Ben would come more often, but... <laughs> <laughs> if you rejoice that we are making it official that Katie is a member of this church, let me know by saying, Amen. Amen. Very good. I'm going to ask the two of y'all, if you don't mind, if you want to go out that way so you can grab your stuff. Uh, Jimmy, walk out with them, get them set up out there, because I know people want to officially welcome Katie into the church family after her four year internship or however long it's been here. Y'all follow him on that. God's doing some good things. It's good to be here today. Let's pray and we'll be done. Father God, we bow before you. We thank you for your son, Jesus. Father, remind us that truly everything we will ever need in life can be found in the name of Jesus. I pray that in our lives we would walk more and more in humility whereby we call on your name quicker instead of trying to do our life ourselves and then calling on your name when we make a mess of it. Bless every home uh, represented in this room, those watching online. We love you today. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen.